Hello guys, today I am going to talk about a uh, reviewer that I happen to be a big fan of, uh, the Nostalgia Critic, and one of his more disappointing reviews, Home Alone 3. Now I just want to make a couple of things clear before I get started here. I am no fan of Home Alone 3, it was actually one of the most disappointing films I've ever seen. Uh, I thought the first film was pretty good, the second film was relatively acceptable in a very sort of mild-mannered kind of way. Um, Home Alone 3, I liked the idea of uh, them actually do using a different kid. I actually thought that was quite a good idea. Uh, reboot the franchise, essentially. It just didn't work at all. Uh, so, for that reason, I was really looking forward to seeing the Nostalgia Critic do this review. And it was just a massive letdown. Uh, at least for me. The other thing I want to make clear is, I am a massive fan of the Nostalgia Critic. Uh, his recent reviews of Baby Geniuses and Dr The Lost World, Jurassic Park, I thought they were both really good. Uh, he, he's not as consistently uh, as brilliant or outstanding as uh, he used to be, but uh, definitely every Wednesday morning when I wake up, uh, my first thought is a uh, new Nostalgia Critic review. Some people have suggested that perhaps he should start doing them every fortnight rather than every week. It's week isn't long enough to get the reviews out there. Perhaps there's some truth in that, but uh, I will commend him for certainly doing reviews every week. You know, the amount of work that obviously goes into these reviews that he has to do in the space of a week. Really impressive. I just didn't think he was uh, as good with this particular review. So without further ado, let's get started on the Nostalgia Critics review of Home Alone 3. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Let me tell you a story about a brilliant writer and director named John Hughes. He recently passed away, but what he left behind will last forever. He directed such classics like The Breakfast Club, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, and so forth. Well, I agree with The Breakfast Club and Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but since when is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles considered a classic? It was alright, but it was no masterpiece. He also was a talented writer, writing screenplays for the National Lampoon Vacation movies, Home Alone, Pretty in Pink, and many more. Okay, don't get me started on the National Lampoon films. Then Home Alone 2 came around. He wrote it, and it sucked. So National Lampoon Christmas Vacation is a great film. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles is a great film. But Home Alone 2 sucks? I don't know, they seem like the same basic standard of slapstick comedy to me. Then Baby's Day Out came around. He wrote it, and it sucked. Then 101 Dalmatians. Flubber. Just Visiting. Dennis the Menace. That shitty-ass Miracle on 34th Street remake. All written by him! What happened? He was like the voice, and then he got lost to the slapstick-inspired shit. Or slap shit, as I like to call it. Well, first of all, where was the slapstick in the Miracle on 34th Street remake? Um, but more importantly, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles had plenty of slapstick, and... National Lampoon Christmas Vacation had plenty of slapstick. That's all they were, those films, basically. Why is the slapstick in them okay, but not okay in Flubber or Just Visiting? Seems like a bit of a double standard to me. So the movie starts with the typical Home Alone music, followed by the typical Home Alone credits, taking place in the typical Home Alone setting. Hong Kong! Literally, the first minute completely misses the idea of the franchise. Well, to be fair, that is a good point. It does seem like a mistake to introduce the villains first, when you compare it to the previous two Home Alone films, where Marv and Harry were introduced about 20 minutes in. Uh, especially when you consider that the protagonist for this film is a new character that we haven't met yet. But I just want to remember that he said the typical Home Alone location, and how it's missed that idea. Just remember that for a couple of minutes. Ten million dollars for the missile chip. Sounds like your clients want to build a missile that can't be detected by radar. Whoever possesses this chip could dominate the entire region. What is this, Die Hard 5? What does this have to do with Home Alone? We well, had the opportunity there to make a Die Hard joke, especially when you consider the fact that the first two Die Hard films take place at Christmas, like the first two Home Alone films did. I don't know, there's a Possibility for some sort of joke there, isn't there? No? Nothing? Okay. As they pin down the area where the woman was dropped off, and seeing how it's a John Hughes movie, my guess is it's in a Chicago suburb where everybody is rich, quirky, and white. Oh, what a shock! Or to put it another way, the typical Home Alone location! What, you're gonna criticize this film for not 
are starting off with a typical home loan location, and now you are criticising it for having a typical home loan location? Double standard. This little boy is Alex, not Kevin. Alex! He doesn't even know Kevin. That's because Kevin's not in this movie. None of the original characters are in this movie. This is because nothing about this movie has anything to do with Home Alone, despite the fact that it carries the name Home Alone. Well, except for the fact that, uh, as you've made pretty obvious already, it was written by the same guy. It features a kid who spends most of his time home alone fighting some criminals, and it takes place in the typical Home Alone location. I actually thought the idea of using a complete different cast of characters was actually quite a good idea, and it could have worked if they put any effort into it whatsoever. So, uh, I have to disagree here. Hey look, it's Scarlett Johansson's his sister. I already made a Lost in Translation joke in North, so let's move on. Or maybe you could have made a joke about another Scarlett Johansson film. I mean, at the time this review came out, Iron Man 2 was due to be released very shortly. Why not make a joke about that? What is Lost in Translation the only Scarlett Johansson film you've ever seen or something? Look, Doris. Okay, wouldn't this have been an ideal time for your CAT gag? I don't know, I, I'm not someone who would really encourage recurring gags being used excessively or anything, but uh, it just seemed like such a perfect opportunity and you didn't use it. Uh, and it becomes particularly painful when you see uh, the actual gag he does use here. You know... I'm actually trying to envision the great John Hughes writing scenes like that. And then the mouse looks through the telescope and sees a cat. It's just a cat on the TV screen, but nevertheless, he gets scared. <laughs> John Hughes, you've done it again. <laughs> Where's my whiskey? So basically, he's just basically saying to his viewers, Oh, come on, can't you just see how unfunny this is? Without really making any kind of attempt to to explain why the scene doesn't work or why it isn't funny. Know, that, that, that's kind of uh, desperate, almost. Now, to be fair, the scene where he's pretending to be John Hughes, I actually found that kind of mildly amusing the first time. But just wait and see how many times he uses it. And wouldn't you know it, both parents have to leave the house, as the father always goes on business trips and the mother has to make a last-minute presentation at her job. I'll be gone an hour at the very most. I called Mrs. Hess and told her you'll be alone. She said if anything comes up, she'll be right over. Well, wait a minute. Why doesn't she just have Mrs. Hess watch him? Your kid is sick and all alone. Who cares if she's a bitch? She's still a babysitter, you whore. Well, that's a reasonable point. I mean, on the one hand, they do kind of have to force in the Home Alone scenario somehow. Uh, but it does seem like a bit sort of a, a half-hearted way of uh, getting it in there than just deciding he isn't going to be supervised by anyone. But I actually thought that was kind of contrived in the first Home Alone, the way that they couldn't get through to anyone and they couldn't get into contact with anyone else on the street where Kevin lived. So I, I, I would say this is about on the same level as the first two films, or at least the first film. He's not uh, home in the second film. The only possible explanation I could come up with is that perhaps Mrs. Hess is busy doing something else. Or perhaps, you know, because she's a grouchy, grumpy woman, they said to her, Oh, do you want to babysit Alex? And she's like, No, I don't like that kid. I don't know. Just a guess. Alex continues to look through his telescope. This is uh, kind of a mixed bag for me, this gag. Uh, on the one hand, I actually do remember watching this film shortly before seeing the review, and think to myself, this scene actually was very similar to Rear Window. Uh, on the other hand, I'm not such a big fan of these gags that he does, where he just simply plays clips from other films, uh, because they're similar to moments from the film that he's reviewing. Uh, it seems kind of like going down the uh, Family Guy route. Now, Family Guy's a great show and everything, uh, but the kind of gags I don't like that they do is just simply uh, making reference to something and just assuming that the mere fact that they're making reference to something is funny in itself. And he's basically doing the same thing here. He doesn't actually say anything about the film Rear Window. Uh, he just plays a clip from it. And that in itself is supposed to be funny somehow. And no, uh, it doesn't work for me. But I did find it kind of personally satisfying because I actually had the same thought 
when I watched this part of the film myself. <laughs> No, 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 that's too dark, that's too dark. That was the old John Hughes. This is the new quirky, lighthearted John Hughes. Let's see, let's see. Oh, I know! The dog actually freezes in place! <laughs> so here he's using the same gag he's used earlier in the review. And uh, for anyone who's not seen this review, this is not going to be the last time he uses it either. Uh, and also, for the record, I actually thought that was pretty funny. They actually say freeze to the dog, and the dog actually does freeze. I thought that was actually one of the few genuinely funny moments in the film. So uh, you're just simply sitting here and pretending to be John Hughes, just basically saying to us, Oh, can't you just see how unfunny this is? How you would have to be high or completely drunk to want to write something like that and actually genuinely think it's funny? Well, no, actually, I actually did think that was uh, mildly funny. Sorry. But wouldn't you know it, the spies break into another house the next day. Well, that's okay though, because we know that the parents stayed home this time. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. They left again? What kind of parents are these? Do they leave their fucking medicine in the toy chest as well? Well, no, they just work full time jobs. Granted, you had a point about not leaving a babysitter with Alex, but that's generally what a lot of parents do. They have to work. I saw a burglar yesterday, and I saw a burglar today. There was no one in that house. But there was some thing on the wing! Yeah, once again, like uh, the rear window gag, he's just simply making reference to the Twilight Zone without actually making a joke about it. Sorry, it doesn't do it for me. So he figures it's time to take matters into his own hands. First the Steffens, then Mrs. Hess. I agree, Doris. The next stop is the Alcott's house. What kind of a burglar goes into a house and doesn't take anything? Do you know what I think? I think they're looking for something special. And they're looking in everybody's house because they don't know who has it. Yes, it appears we'll need more than elementary in this matter. Doris, fetch me my violin! <laughs> Well, that was uh, mildly funny, I guess. I didn't really understand the violin bit. Uh, but I was definitely expecting some sort of comment about some horrible acting in that scene. My god. I didn't even realise until I actually watched the review just how bad that actor was in that scene. As the parents leave him for a third time! Alright, this is comical now. I mean, really comical. Remember what a big deal it was in the first film when they left him behind? How could we do this? We forgot him. Just horrible. What kind of mother am I? And now it's just like, Have fun while I'm gone, son! Be sure to stay away from the rat poison I keep under your pillow! Well, first of all, in the first film, they forget Kevin. They don't deliberately leave him behind like they do in this film. Uh, and in the first film, they're going away on vacation. And in this film, the parents have to work. So it's not really the same situation. Again, you had a point about leaving Alex uh, home alone without even a babysitter uh, on three occasions, uh, especially given the fact that he's not feeling very well. Um, I actually think that might actually be illegal. Uh, certainly I think there are laws about leaving kids home alone at night if they're under the age of 14, but that might just be in this country. So the comparison with the original film isn't really a fair one, but you've sort of got a point about leaving him al alone without even a babysitter. So with a camera, duct tape, and a few wires, Alex manages to get his own wireless security network. The five-year-old now has a portable wireless security network. The realism in this movie just fucking astounds me. Yeah, that is a good point, and that is one major reason why this film does not work at all. Uh, and it gets far worse later on in the film as well. Kind of a missed opportunity for a gag there, though. There wasn't really any kind of... Uh comical line, really, there. It was just sarcasm and annoyance. So, good point, but had the potential for a joke there, and you didn't use it. Yeah, thank God none of the houses have babies, toddlers, or stay-at-home parents. Sort of lucked out on that front. 